Hi everyone, thank you for joining me here. And uh, question that I wondered, and uh, one of the last videos I posted, or one of the last videos I posted, but uh, hasn't been live yet, as I s scheduled it. I uh, talked about and I don't know if this video is going to be first or the other one is going to be first. But anyways, I talked about con uh, coronavirus and how, what is the real reason of coronavirus? Is it really, because we know it's either one of the two things. It's either made in a government laboratory, actually three things, either made in a government laboratory. Second, either comes from eating animals and being in close proximity of animals. Or third, a little bit of both. So, this is my feeling, and by no means is it truth. But I believe, and um, actually, some of it, is, like a lot of it, is truth. But I feel that a lot of these infectious diseases, as Dr. Michael Greger points out in his video, and I'll post down the video down below of the video that was he did in 2008. And it's very pertinent to the coronavirus and uh, whatever other pandemics are going to be happening or what happened in the past. And so my feeling is that majority of of these infectious diseases that are taking place around the world and from what Humane Society of the United States claims, though I don't agree completely with HSUS and I don't endorse them, but they claim that three quarters of the diseases that we're getting today, um, these infectious diseases, like AIDS and SARS and Ebola and all these things come from the consuming of animals and animal products, specifically bush meat. And bush meat being eating of wild life or wild, you know, animals living freely in nature. And when we think about this when, when I think about this, it could be true three quarters or maybe even more of the animals that we consume or a lot of the infectious diseases that we get are because of eating animals and their secretions. And so it is coming back to us. Karma is really it's coming back to us as negative karma, coming back to us uh, from eating animals and animal products. You can see this time and time again, people eating animal products. And the general consensus when it comes to science and when it comes to, in general, vegan doctors saying that animal products, and no matter, typically no matter where the animals or, or originate, if it's factory farming or backyard or whatever, the more animal products we consume, and that means milk, dairy, eggs, honey, flesh of animals, whatever, the more likely we're going to have a higher chance of developing diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cancers, osteoporosis, joint problems, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the biggest culprit is the acidity in these foods, especially because animal products are so acidic, especially when we're cooking them, they even become more so. And there's a uh, heterocyclic amines. When we cook animal products, especially on high temperatures, because if we don't, we also get other kinds of diseases. So no matter if we eat it raw or if we eat it cooked, both ways we're harming ourselves. And there, no matter, even if, even if 
animal products did not cause disease. And it was something else that's causing us to have these diseases like cancers and heart disease, heart disease and diabetes and so forth. Because these are the three biggest killers as in as in these diseases of affluence. Uh, just if animal products cannot be good for us mentally and spiritually because of the fact that when we, especially when we're treating these animals poorly, very, very violently, and we consume their flesh and we consume their secretions, we're taking in all their emotions, their fear, their suffering, their loneliness, their depression. And when we consume those foods, especially when it comes to factory farming, when we consume these foods, we take in all their emotion, their negative emotion. And so when we do that, it cannot be good for us. I mean, these emotions just don't vanish into thin air. These emotions that are in their flesh and their secretions are transferred to us, into our cells and into our tissues. And we exhibit all sorts of negative uh, things because of that. So the aftermath is that we're consuming death, we're consuming torture, we're consuming fear, we're consuming terror, we're consuming uh, their disease, we're consuming this, we're consuming that. And we become, you see in our world, we become all that what we consume. So if they're fe having or feeling terror, we're, we're feeling that in our world terror and in our own lives, terror and fear, because they're exhibiting those same emotions in these farms and these slaughterhouses. They're exhibiting fear and terror and loneliness and depression and anger and all these things. And we exhibit the same things. Now, all of us are not going to exhibit the exact same symptoms. Because some people will, for example, may abuse their companion animals or their spouses or their children. And this is due to consuming animal foods and other people are get, developing diseases. So each of us is getting something else. We're not all going to be abusing animals, for example. We're all going to develop some symptom of whatever we're doing to these animals. But we can definitely attest that when we are consuming animal products, that it cannot be good for us, no matter what the animal products are, if it's a bat or a snake or a pig or a chicken, it cannot be a good thing. We cannot be at peace and in love when we're consuming the death and torture of animals. And no matter where they come from, again, of course, if they come from backyard happy animals, uh, or if it comes from if they come from hunting animals in the in nature. Yeah, those are a little bit better. And yes, we're going to be more, a little bit more better off. But by no means are we going to be like bulletproof. No, matter, no means we're going to be truly happy in our lives. There's always going to be things that, you know, there's always going to be those ups and downs and those negative things that happen within our lives. And the more harm we cause, even if we get someone to do it for us, like a farmer or a slaughterhouse worker, uh, and we paid for that to happen directly either to a farmer or if you go to a supermarket and buy these products, we are causing suffering to ourselves and to everyone throughout the world because it doesn't stop there. We don't just take the one life or take the, take the product and steal the product from someone uh, such as the egg from the, from the hen or the um, honey from the bee. But we have to realize that it doesn't just vanish into thin air. These, uh, this energy doesn't just vanish. It gets transferred into us. Just like I mentioned in my, one of my books, that when you plug in a vacuum cleaner, for example, 
the vacuum cleaner the energy from the from the wherever you're getting the energy from maybe from the city or from your own power sources it goes into the wire and the vacuum cleaner works like it, it there's energy everything has energy in it and so when we consume a living being that energy is also transferred in, into us and so the second thing about this video is is it really manufactured in a lab government lab because a lot of people think this is but what i feel is that we tend to in our society people that start to question things tend to a lot of times blame the government or blame mega corporations for the problems that we're facing but in fact individually we are the ones to blame because we are causing all the suffering to other beings and then in the end result it reverberates back to destroying the environment and has a effect on 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 the environment after with deforestation and desertification and destruction of wildlife and all these things and it has a massive effect so we always want to in our society and i remember because i when i i remember a picture that i had taken with me in a circus and in a, i was sitting down at a very young age i don't know how what age i was maybe eight or ten years of age or maybe even 11 but i remember that i was sitting right next to a bear wearing a muzzle and it's like when i went to that picture years later i asked myself this question how on earth could humans do such horrible things and i was blaming others i was i wasn't blaming myself because i didn't realize that i was the problem it wasn't really i mean yes it is humanity in a sense and it is governments in a sense but if you think about it we are really the ones to blame we cannot blame anyone else we are the ones to blame individually um, i am to blame or i was to blame so we always tend to want to blame some outer forces and we tend to a lot of people tend to want to blame governments or tend to want to blame uh our our parents or our, our our children or or our friends or just other people we want to blame others and the problem i think why we're doing this is the fact that and i'm just i'm just thinking about this as as, as i as i say this but basically the thing is we want to blame everyone but i think the reason is because we really don't want to we don't we understand deep down what we're doing is not right but we don't really want to uh, we don't we don't first of all we don't some a lot of us don't know that it is really us individually uh that's that's causing these problems and deep down our emotions are kind of like we're suppressed our culture is suppressing our emotions and suppressing the truth and years later when i went back to that photo of me sitting next to the bear wearing the muzzle and like this is totally unnatural being in a circus but i remember me having this picture taken of me wearing this muzzle and i remember that and i don't know what happened to the image i even asked my mother what happened to it and she doesn't she doesn't know but i realized like many many years later actually after going to the back to the photo of me uh as a vegan in my early years i asked myself another question and the question was instead of what i asked before how on earth could humans have done such thing i asked myself how on earth could i have supported that for all these years and support you know animal pro consuming animal products for all these you know first 26 years of my life and so i understood that i was the problem and until we start to realize that we are the problem then we never make any real change in our lives in order to understand what is the real truth so i think what's happening with this blaming the government that they're creating these things i maybe 
that may be somewhat true that some of these infectious diseases are made in government laboratories because I know I don't trust the government at all, you know, because they lie all the time, they cheat all the time, and they kill all the time, or a lot of times, I should say, um, the majority of the time. And, they, and, the, and the human laws are really not in our best interest. They might have, yes, they might have a few things that help humans and help people, maybe help the environment, but in, in a whole perspective, the government is really not on our side. Uh, you can call it government or shadow government or whatever. Some people call them the Illuminati, which I did in one of my books, uh, Our Path to Freedom. But Illuminati, as somebody was pointing out, is like, it's about enlightenment. So I don't know if that word is really true, but let's, let's call them shadow government or cabal or whatever you want to call them. But anyways, in the whole spectrum, the government is really not on our side, on the people's side. They, You may believe they are, and Maybe they are trying to be sincere, but in the whole thing, there's somebody up there trying to, some elite people, whoever they are. I mean, some people might say who they are or they might, they might be exposed on, online or something, but we really don't know who they are. Uh, we might think, yeah, it might be these people or, you know, the, it might be the royal family or it might be, you know, this person or these people or whatever. And we don't really know. And I know that the government lies and cheats and steals and whatever and kills. Um, I'm not so sure that we should keep, keep on blaming these things for on, on governments and on mega corporations, even though they are to blame for a lot of things. I feel that it's really about us individually and especially when it comes to us eating animals because we can definitely say that and we don't really know what happened in the past because it's his story it's history so we don't really know if it's true or not and who's writing the history um, because a lot of it does either come from the government uh, and or the mega corporations media etc or at least they're endorsed by them and so when we get back to history and I truly believe this, about this. About 10,000 years ago, as anthropologists say, and anthropologists, again, it's science. It's, it's, again, his story. So it's man's story. So I don't know if I truly 100%, 100% believe it, but there might be some truth to this, that about 10,000 years ago, we were, uh, we started animal, uh, we started agriculture in general, animal and plant. And this time especially within the past 100 to 200 years, specifically after the scientific and, and uh, revolution, we started to do more destruction than we ever have in, in all of, uh, ever in, in any time in period, time of period. And so before that, before 10,000 years, and there's anthropologists, feel that from looking at bone structure of, of early humans that we were mainly plant eaters specifically frugivores so fruit eaters and i truly believe that we were fruit eaters and we were living once more peacefully with each other now of course i can't prove this or anything but i believe that this is so and and after when we started to hunt animals and to and eventually hurting animals, you know, seeing animals as property and, 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 and putting them in cages and so forth and in barns and, and all these small confined areas, uh, then we started to notice that there became new things evolved in our world, such as slavery of humans and slavery of women or at least women were like considered second class citizens then the then the um the uh we became indifferent to other humans as well like to other races and we thought that you know caucasians were more superior to other races so these things happened and even as much as 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, all that was 
considered like like banned and we still have slavery of humans and we still have you know prejudices uh, against other races and there is still inequality around the world uh pertaining to gender and sexual orientation and so forth and even to uh ageism and to um any kind of oppression that we facing out, out there and so getting back to this cor coronavirus it's really i think about what we do to other beings and again we tend to want to blame others for these problems that we're facing because we don't really want to understand that individually we are the problems when we're eating animal foods and animal foods of any origin and animal foods even in moderation whatever really that means let's say even if you eat animal products like a couple times a week or even a couple times a month or even if it's a couple times a year we're still contributing to the death of, and and to the stealing and to the confinement of, of animals and we do the same to ourselves uh, of course the more we eat animals the more problems we'll face within our lives um, and of course the it also depends on uh, where the animals and are coming from and how they're treated but in the end we're never going to be happy no matter what where the animals come from how they're treated when we're eating animals and no matter how many animals and how many animal products we're consuming and where they're coming from again we can never be happy in our lives we can never achieve this garden of eden because the garden of eden was all about peace and love and caring and sharing and not about slaughterhouses and killing and wars and and you know different nationalities and different you know borders and government rules and all these things like these are the things that are suppressing our true innate uh, emotions of love and compassion. So I believe that the majority of the problems on this world that we're facing, if it's with infectious diseases like the coronavirus or what have you, it's all because uh, that we're eating animals and animal products. It cannot be denied. No matter Again, no matter where they come from, the animals, no matter what kind of animals we're eating or whatever we have. I mean, yeah, we blame China, we blame Asian people for eating all kinds of crazy foods like bats and rats and and uh, snakes and who knows what else. But we're no better eating other animals. We're eating animals, we're getting diseases and we're, we're, we're causing so much suffering. Like, why can't we just stop it and finally live in true peace and harmony with all life on this earth? I'm so angry sometimes that and sad that i have to and many other vegans have to talk about this issue because we really don't know we really can't make that connection we're not intelligent enough and intelligence is the ability to make connections and we can't make connections especially when it comes to our food choices and therefore we're not intelligent at all we're not wise we're not we're just living our lives and consuming and consuming and consuming and we don't understand the repercussions of our our actions of our overconsumption of things and that's what they are they're things because that's what we think the material things that we buy and also we think of non-human animals as things as well and so we're destroying the whole entire fabric of life. We're all one. If we came from God, whatever you think, if you came from God or a universe or some big bang, we all came from one source. This one life source. And that's what it really is. It's a life source. Or a life source or life force. And when we broke apart, we still are one. And a lot of people understand that we're oneness. But this thing not only includes humans, this includes all the beings, including the earth and all, even all inanimate objects. 
in that because it all everything came from this one life force and so the whole idea is to reawaken to the natural compassion and the love and the empathy and the kindness that our culture has suppressed in us and to stop consuming animal products and 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 things like that to stop overconsumption of things that we absolutely don't need we are not barbarians we're not cavemen and cave women and lions and these are all justifications based on suppressed emotions that our culture suppresses within us capitalism is the problem capitalism is a hurting culture capitalist capita means head as in head of livestock head of cows pigs goats sheep etc and we live in a hurting culture we live in a culture that sees other beings as property and food and other things other for entertainment and clothing and pets and etc etc so let's stop and reconnect with our compassion our emotions our love for all life on this earth and possibly out of this earth if there's any life uh, outside of this earth and let's get back to that real true peace and love that we all care to live in so that is my view and the truth about what's happening today in the world pertaining to the coronavirus and all the infectious diseases and just any problem that we're facing as as humans and humanity on this earth what's happening is a direct correlation to what we're doing to other beings what that we're seeing them nothing as property and as food and as things to be used let's stop this nonsense already once and for all and live truly live in harmony with all life thank you so much for listening to this long video but i think it's so important that we get this message out to the world and don't forget to like this video to share it around with everyone that you think would find it useful as well as subscribe to my youtube channel and to my email newsletter and don't forget if you want to learn about these things more in depth you can get any of my books of course my earlier books talk about it as well but uh, the later books really go into it in, in the details like the lost love um our path to freedom talks a little bit more about the uh, government situation and things like that and the uh, deceptful uh, governments and mega corporations and so forth uh, as well as my newest ones creating a beautiful world and uh, return to the gentle sea those ones are i believe my better books um as they contain more new information and my you know, newer thoughts and things like that so that's really about it everyone uh thanks for watching and i'll see you soon